inner strength through consistent prayer build inner strength you may want to add and stamina through consistent prayer listen let me tell you this if you do not know how to pray you will not last there is a dimension of strength that survives the winds of life that is generated within you when you pray Luke 18 and verse 1 says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint you must build inner strength build inner strength Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10 let's hurry up 24 and verse 10 Proverbs 24 and verse 10 watch this if thou faint in the day of adversity in the life of everyone no matter how yielded you are there is a season that the bible calls the day of adversity and the survival strategy in those seasons is strength 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 are we together you have to be strengthened within your inner man build capacity Elijah build capacity David build capacity Abraham build capacity no matter who you are build capacity it doesn't matter what you are involved with as far as your prophetic destiny is concerned build capacity and build it early my sister build capacity because one day you will need it you will need to draw from the strength there are times when you are about to take a long journey you charge your phone is that true and when it is fully charged you can smile because you can approximate that from now till that time you can utilize the strength that the that the, the, the phone has that's how it is I've seen many people's phones and you see it on red five percent two percent the phone does not look like it will die notice what happens when the power keeps reducing certain features the phone will start shutting down certain features as a survival strategy this is what happens with destiny too the moment your power bank the moment your energy bank starts going down certain things may have to shut down one can be your perception your ability to perceive spiritual things will have to shut down certain other things will shut down like it happens to a phone at 15 percent 10 percent eight percent there are certain features in that phone that you may not is called a power saving mode there are many believers running great destinies on power saving mode whereas there is an opportunity to carry a wireless charger a charger that does not look for a wall a charger that answers at the instance of desire are we together prayer is not a burdensome ritual to just feel spiritual can I tell you you will never be able to run certain visions if you do not have the inner strength that comes through prayer and comes with prayer what you see in koinonia today ladies and gentlemen is beyond just excellence and the communication of doctrine there is stamina there is a power bank that can run certain things in the spirit someone sent me a text and said apostle you've been busy all week doing this and that and that and will you have the strength i said me you don't know god me and god have been in this business for a while though there is what we call the spirit of might you cannot fake it believe me i'm not careless with my health but you cannot fake it god will never call you without teaching you the technology that keeps you in strength there are some of you who carry something for two hours and you will yawn for two days you are 25 years you are like a woman who has finished giving birth to 11 children you preach for one hour and return back and say i, I need a vacation <laughs> destiny wake up strength capacity it happens through the place of prayer somebody went to visit smith wigglesworth 
years ago his story would tell us that when the guy got there he greeted him and he kept quiet and there was nothing to discuss then smith with goose what told him he said can we pray he thought he was just you know father lord we thank you they prayed and the guy was tired he didn't know how to stop smith with goose word. then later he stopped then they spoke a little he said can we pray again and <laughs> A powerful way to drive distractors. Pray. Pray. When visitors come to your house and they refuse to leave, pray. Survival strategies. Pray. Tell them, all right, we've spent two hours just in, I think it's time. Let's lift up our hands and give God praise. And everybody will check their time and leave you in peace. Pray. Because people don't like prayer. They like what prayer does. But they hate the discipline of prayer. And it's an attack. Please hear me. If you hate prayer, it's an attack. Don't feel condemned. But know it's an attack. You wake up in the night. Open up your notebook where God has spoken to you. Shama katabarata sleepy eyes your tired self just start praying shabrando's kadiada worship is charging the atmosphere you are a man of god you don't even know what to do with your church you've preached every sermon you just keep praying as you keep praying the spirit of god who can search the heart of the father will start downloading series to your spirit you have not taught your people on prayer you have not taught you and series can come that can last two years in the place of prayer every time is convenient for prayer but in my personal experience believe me i have mastered praying at night and it, it has provided the richest return on investment in terms of prayer discipline yourself and pray you're a man of god here with all due respect don't let your members pray more than you why are they there then you should be sitting down prayer is one of such things you cannot fake you can come out and act like you are prayerful if you are not there is an energy that comes from prayer that one you cannot pretend it and the energy is perceivable even to somebody who is not saved you can perceive health Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Listen, the moment seasons become unfavorable, minimize discussions, minimize attracting sympathy, that is the time to lock yourself even if you don't understand what is happening why are people dying in my church in three weeks ten people died go and lock your place out five of my children mysteriously sick when they made a deposit of 10 million somebody just came and caused trouble and that money disappeared anytime you sense affliction negative seasons go ahead and pray if most believers will do less of talking and more of prayer they will triumph in experience we talk a lot as believers we have not been called to be noisemakers in terms of speaking gibberish the energy of the believer should be invested in building capacity let me teach you something if you are a leader and you talk too much you will lose your honor factor as a leader your word should be mighty the more scarce your word the more people will listen when you speak when you run your mouth anyhow you also run your honor out with it a time will come your words will be so cheap there will be nobody around you to hear it words are expensive don't waste them don't waste them don't waste them leadership 101 words are expensive can I tell you another thing that is expensive? Your attention. Don't cheapen your attention. Attention is an expensive commodity. Don't invest it in nonsense. Did you hear what I said? Your attention is where the direction of your destiny goes to. 
respect your destiny enough to see your attention as an investment don't throw it away over nothing oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me spirit of wisdom say in the name of Jesus I build capacity say it prophetically in the name of Jesus I build capacity oh my dear sister build capacity my dear brother build capacity a day will come something will befall you that you will not have all that energy to pray you will draw from the residue of the energy that comes within your prayer bank please pray don't waste moments don't waste opportunities pray listen let me encourage you if your prayer life has gone down you can join the prayer department as they pray even if you are not a member there even if it's for one week if there's space you can join them to just fan your prayer life to flames discern an attack on your prayer is an attack on your remaining it's an attack on your continuity it's an attack on your stamina that is why it's important to have believers as friends did you hear what I said half the time people used to gossip half the time people used to talk about people and issues if they invest half that time in quality prayer you have any prayer partner that spends half the prayer time gossiping cast him out of your life did you hear what I said cast him or her out of your life don't waste your time on naysayers and gossips and backbiters who wrap up their gossip in the name of Jesus take your destiny seriously you agree with someone let us pray don't waste your time and he says praise God you've prayed for 10 minutes and you continue speaking nonsense for two hours then you wrap it up you did not pray you only program woes to your destiny if you have somebody who should pray the assignment there is for prayer okay we are praying from 10 to 12 once it's time all right let's begin to pray yes occasionally you may speak to discuss some things to give your prayer perspective many prayer warriors have killed the prayer life of their colleagues because they, they wasted that time on gossips and naysayings and false visions pray 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 you are a mother find another mother who can agree with you pray you are a businessman find another businessman who can relate with your realm and pray are we together you are a man of God pray that God will bring a man of God who genuinely loves you and prays not that he's praying with his mouth and with his heart he's saying may you die quick prayer but when you find people who can agree with you you have your personal prayer altar I have said this endlessly koinonia let me encourage families here build your corporate family prayer altar build it as a discipline now I know that maybe some families may have people who are not born again no problem you can start where you are with wisdom build a family prayer altar pray don't allow the devil come in and ride cheaply into your family by the privilege of God's grace let me encourage every man here take the lead as far as setting the pace for prayer don't say I'm not the prayer type nobody's the prayer type God commands that we pray are we together now obtain grace don't say I'm a CEO prayer is not for pastors don't leave your wife as a naked intercessor with nobody helping her yours is just to submit prayer point by text or on a paper pray you can learn prayer is someone learning build inner strength this is something God has taught me one of our fathers in the faith every time I've had the opportunity to see him particularly when preparing for administration as soon as I enter his office he's praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in tongues he will speak a little and then once he has a little chance he's praying in tongues I said ah that's the secret 
they understand that capacity is a necessary is a necessary requirement as far as remaining is concerned number four is God helping someone you would outlast every adversity you would outlast every season every condition in the name of Jesus 30 years from now you will still be standing are you receiving that 50 years from now you will still be standing you will not stand alone your children will stand with you your family will stand with you your business will stand with you your organization will stand with you the cancer that fights longevity let it be far from your life there are times no man will be able to answer the question you are asking only the one who created the heavens and the earth why did my brother die why did my sister die why did my company fold why is the ministry not advancing again i make reference to god's servant who said one time the church that today has become a global phenomenon was not growing and he called on a few brethren and they went into prayer and fasting and whilst they were praying according to him that the lord asked him to step out and answered him showed him a dark layer of cloud and said this is a dark layer misrepresenting your ministry and he was asked to cause it and then he printed the posters and said come and see and that was the beginning of a journey today that has inspired millions across the globe can i tell you the truth every champion is a champion because of what he overcame two what is the second key that controls consistency longevity of impact the ability to stay and weary the storms of life until you emerge are you ready you want to pay attention to this right now submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life write it down please submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life one more time submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life in any and all matters i want to teach you something that has destroyed many people now please lend me your attention to buttress on the point i'm about to make please make reference to my teaching knowing god accurately one more time knowing god accurately it is a risk it is dangerous let me just read out what i wrote here then i explain it is dangerous to build your life and your destiny on any other factor or foundation aside the word of god please listen it is dangerous to build your life on any other factor or foundation aside the word of god factors like human philosophies factors like intellect even factors like visionary encounters hmm. point two you want to stay to last to remain to outdo to outlast submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over any and all matters and i said it is dangerous to build your life on any other factor please look up any other foundation and any other factor i have met many people in my life whose lives continue to plunge and decline degrade and the basis of their exploring life is visions and dreams and you know by the privilege of god's grace this is a ministry with a rich heritage of supernatural encounters visionary encounters and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit so i'm in no way downplaying the gifts of the spirit but i have watched gifts fail people i have watched people live on visions that have never come to pass and will never come to pass because they exalted visionary experiences above the word of god i have seen people say god said and nothing in their life shows that god said 
when you exalt human philosophies, when you exalt intellect, for many believers, Satan has cheated us because he has made us too emotionally connected to visions and prophecies. And I'm not against that, not at all. The Bible already says to despise not prophesying. But can I tell you, heaven and earth will pass away, the Bible says, but only the word of God abides forever. Show me a man who never has a vision in his life. Show me a man who never has an opportunity for some out-of-body experience. But he can find what is written and stake his destiny at it. I show you a champion who will emerge and remain. Kenneth E. Hagen of blessed memory, in one of his teachings, he made a statement, if I recall, that when the move of God started within their generation, it was a season of outpouring and many ministers of the gospel you know they caught that fire but he made an observation according to him that most of them exalted gifts supernatural experiences above the word of god and according to him he cautioned them many of them built their ministries based on visions what they saw and he told them they would not last and many many of them in spite of the excellency of their encounters they eventually fell like a pack of cards i can tell you the reason why koinonia is standing today is not because i saw jesus necessarily the reason why koinonia is standing today is not because of my encounters with angels and spirits the reason why koinonia is found is is standing today is because we have opened the book and we have found where longevity is connected you see that now don't run your life based on visions. No. Let visions be a support system for the word. Let prophecy be a support system for the word. You cannot get up and just move from Lagos to Abuja simply because you had a dream and you saw that you moved from Lagos to Abuja. It may be genuine. It may be God speaking. But it's still a risk. Because the margin of error visionary encounters depend on your level of transformation they depend on your perception the, the, the variables are many two scriptures to encourage you is someone learning tonight psalm 12 6 to 7 psalm 12 the words of the lord are pure words he says as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times verse 7 he says Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Because of the word. Your experiences have not been vetted. Your ability to see visions has not been tried. But the word of God has been tested seven times. Let me tell you the truth. If I were to act out everything I saw, or everything I thought God was telling me, you would be amazed at the degree to which I would have veered this ministry in error. Because looking at my higher self now, I look at my former self tomorrow, and there were a number of things I wrote, believing at that point, convinced that it was God that told me. In the presence of higher light, I know that something was wrong with my seed or my interpretation. Don't build your life just on superstitious spirituality. The word of God has the kind of foundation that your destiny needs. Are we learning now? So I can have a vision right now and see myself dipping my hands in oil. And out of that vision, with all due respect now, I can create a monument around that experience. You see that now? That is dangerous. Many people's lives have gone down today because the basis of their confidence is not the word of God. Two more scriptures. Psalm 18 and verse 30. This one blessed me. May it bless you. Psalm 18 and verse 30. The Bible says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of God is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. The word of God has been tried. The word of God has been tried. You can stake your life on the word of God. Please look at me. I have taught you here, Koinonia, it is written, is greater than I saw. It is written, is greater than I heard. It is written, is greater than I dreamt. If I dream today that I entered a coffin, I will come out of that coffin and close it. 
Do you know how I will come out? Number one, I will wake up. That's how to come out. I will wake up from that dream. Number two, I will find the scripture that has the energy like a hammer to close that curtain. For instance, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. For instance, are we learning now? I said before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. It's true. If you say you are going to kill me by divination or witchcraft, my prayer will be for mercy for you. Because I've surrounded my life with the word, not experiences. I will not stand before Satan and say, you don't know what God showed me in that vision. Jesus did not stand and say, do you know where I came from? He said, it is written. Jesus, the word incarnate. You thought that if Satan came to him, you would say you are joking. I came from heaven to earth. That special number will not bring you deliverance. No. Nothing wrong with the song. I'm just saying in this example. When you stand before life, they do not respect I saw. I saw is for your benefit. They do not respect I heard. What you saw only works when it is consistent with what is written. What you heard only works when you say there are anchor scriptures. Everything we want to do in this ministry, we never start it until there are anchor scriptures. It may start based on a vision, a prompting of the spirit, or just the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. But the trigger for everything is the word of God. What makes you believe you have great children? I, I, I had a course in counseling and the person who taught us was very smart. Find out whether the teacher's child is well behaved. There are times that all factors can be well, yet things don't go well. You will need the scripture. I am bringing you to a point where you respect the word. Listen, I've had the honor of being close a bit to our fathers of faith in this nation. And I can tell you the greatest lesson I've learned from them is that in spite of their prophetic advantage in all its ramification, they have a healthy respect for the word of God. In their generations, many of them started by saying God said. There were many people who rose and criticized and some of them have died and gone. I told you here, I was watching Kenneth Hagin. There are two people in their old age who have inspired me greatly in terms of longevity. One is Kenneth Copeland. The other is a great dear wonderful woman called Marilyn Hickney. They are both in their 80s. Now, these people, I've had the honor of following them for many years. They said things that were very childlike, sometimes childish. And we MOGs in our pride, we criticize those people. Some of these people who made all those noise have gone to be with the Lord today. Some of those people have remained stunted today. And these generals who have lifted the word of God beyond the frailty of their understanding. They have outlasted every mountain. Storms came and went. All kinds of things came and went. But those who were built on the rock. I don't want to take the risk with my life of making the prophetic advantage God gave me become a curse by throwing away the Bible and running koinonia with I saw. We see in part what if I see all of you inside a river? Hello? What if I finish praying and fasting and see all of you in a river? The next thing I say, all of you, let's be on our way to Abuja. Just as an example. No. What if I see all of you in a desert? And I say, follow me there. Then what if in that desert I now grow spiritually and find out that that vision was from Satan? I now say, return back here. Can you live effectively that way? No. Emmanuel, God is with us. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him King of Kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. 
wonderful house the Lord the mighty God Emmanuel God is with us He shall reign he shall reign, He shall reign forevermore. In Matthew chapter 7, 24 and 25, the Bible talks about one who built on a rock. Please look at me. Build your marriage on the word, not just on emotions. Find the scripture that becomes the basis of your confidence that your children will not be useless. If you think you are rich today because you have a billion naira, a million naira in your bank account, you are joking. Go and read about people whose wealth turned from grace to grass in one moment. The basis of your remaining must be that which is written. I have come to respect that which is written. I have made the word of God final authority over my life in all matters. And that includes this ministry. No matter what God tells me, I bring it through the sieve of the word. There has to be a scripture. I don't pray foolish prayers. Once I'm not praying in the spirit, I insist and ensure, like you'll be learning, that whatever I'm saying is not driven by sentiments and emotions. The only basis for answered prayer in the scripture is that you pray in accordance with the will of God. 